ladies and gentlemen. We take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Said she caught a cold today. Just doesn't think she should come out in the night air. Yeah. Want to know if she could come down tomorrow sometime. Well, that's the third time she's had some excuse for not coming down. Uh, we can't hold that suspect forever. Hey, uh, you got a smoke on you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Tell me, why is it people will holler and yell for protection and law until they're blue in the face and... have a chance to do something about apprehending and convicting a criminal, they just can't get in the car and drive down to the police station and identify a suspect. Just can't do it. You tell me, Ben. How about Kiefer? Is he here? Who said he'd be here this morning? Well, he's late now. You want him to look at that 459 came in this afternoon on extradition? Yeah. So Rigo's the guy's name, number 34. He'll be in the last runoff. Uh, May I have well, I better hold it down by the door in case he comes in. Okay, I'll see you, man. You people yeah. out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you, my little Hi. Hi, Ben, what's up? Mm, mm, mm. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects I'm merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the light. All right, boys, keep it moving right over to the end of the stage. That's it, come on. Now turn and face front hands to your sides. You, take your hands out of your pockets. Now step out to the circle when I call your name and number. When you answer my questions, talk up so the people in the back of the room can hear what you have to say. Okay, number one, William Yola, Grand Theft Auto. Where do you live, William? Here. In town. I live here. You got an address? Sure. Palmyra Street. 132 Palmyra Street. What's your business? Well, I work for Warner Gear, loading in the B&O yard. Anyone arrested with you, William? Yeah. Jim Barnes is in the next room. I seen him when I came up. Jim Barnes, number uh, 16. Any weapons, William? No. Sergeant Grab. Yes. Ask him to say, fill it up and check the oil. Okay. You hear him? Yeah. Well, say it. Fill it up and check the oil. Say it like you meant it, like you were in a filling station. I wish I was. Never mind that. Fill it up and check the oil. Okay, Sergeant, we'll want to see him. All right. Over on that side of the stage, William. Next, number two, Robert Dawson, failing to register. Tell us where you live, Robert. Here, yeah, right here in the stinking jail. Before your arrest, a stinking jail upstate. The state penitentiary? Yeah. Where'd you fall from? Uh, Vada County, 1949, burglar. How long you been out? Three days. Don't look at me, look out there. Anyone arrested with you? Sylvia, she's my wife. Do you have a gun? No. Did she? No. Well, then we got an extra 32 automatic around the place. A nickel-plated one, Robert? And Ivor Johnson. You sure you didn't have it? Oh, sure, I'm sure. And your wife didn't have it either? No. You own a car? <laughs> Three days out here. Yes, yeah, stand to it. No, no, I don't own a car. I ain't got a gun. I ain't got nothing. I ain't done nothing. Why, you got me up here in this lineup anyway. I'd... Failing to register for one oh, day. Oh, so I'll register. Bring out your little green book and I'll register a couple of times if you want me to. But why all this? 
Besides the gun, the officers found a jimmy, a pinch bar, a glass cutter, screen cutter, and a lock jam, all in your possession at the time of your arrest. That's why. What's that prove? Nothing. Well, you did a little time for second story. Second story work uh, once? Hmm? Now, tell us what we're supposed to think, Rob. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, my victim shows take care of him. Here's the key. Right, man. Okay, I'll be in Waldo's office. Okay. okay. If you haven't done anything, you haven't got anything that we want. Two eighty six A at Darling and Seven. See the man. Seventy three. A three fifteen to see. Come in. Oh, hi, Ben. Come on in. Hi. Uh, this is uh, George McCadden, Lieutenant Guthrie. How do you do? How do you do? Hey, grab some chairs, boy. About six months ago, Mr. McCadden met a girl named Vivian Hahn, hostess at a restaurant over on Fifth, Down. Yeah, I know the place. Well, I'm in the advertising business. My office is in the Park Norton building right across the street. Suppose you tell Lieutenant Guthrie what you told me. All right. I think something's happened to Vivian. Uh, start at the beginning, please. Oh. Well, uh, Vivian is a pretty girl and always very pleasant and nice. I began seeing her now and then. We've had dinner and we went to a few shows together. She lived by herself in a little apartment over on Maragani Street. A couple of months ago, I went over there to pick her up and an older woman answered the door. A Mrs. Kennebock. She said she was Vivian's mother. When Vivian came into the room, there was quite a scene. Mrs. Kennebock was pretty upset about Vivian going out with me and kept repeating that Vivian was a married woman. Well, when we got outside, Vivian told me that she had been married once, but it hadn't worked out and she'd been divorced more than a year. The guy's name was Bob Harmon. He lives in New Orleans now. She said her mother had tried to talk her out of divorcing this guy and never really accepted the fact that the marriage didn't exist anymore. Well, it seems her mother is going to live with her at the apartment from then on. When I brought Vivian home that night, the old lady was waiting up, and she had some pretty strong things to say, accusing Vivian of all sorts of things and ordered me to get out and never come back. She hit Vivian in the mouth and cut her lip before it was all over with. Well, after that, I wouldn't go to the apartment to pick up Viv. I met her downtown or someplace else. She quit at the restaurant and got a job in a defense plant. She wanted some more money so she could buy herself a car. Well, I was out with Viv two weeks ago. We went to a movie. And my phone was ringing when I got home. It was Mrs. Kennevoy telling me that I'd never see Vivian again. And she was pretty mad. She said she knew that I'd been meeting Viv all this time. Now, how old is Vivian? 27, Lieutenant. Sure old enough to do what she wants, don't you think? Yeah. Go on. Well, Viv didn't call me the next day or the next. And I finally took a chance and called the apartment. I called three days. And I didn't get an answer. So I drove by a couple of times and saw Viv's car in the garage. You didn't want to go up to the apartment on account of Mrs. Kennebec, huh? That's right. I didn't want to stir up things. But I did want to see Viv. Well, couldn't you call her at work? Oh, I tried to get her, but uh, I got the personnel office. And I was surprised when they told me she was taking an extended leave of absence. Mm -hmm. now, what else did they say? Well, that's all the information they gave me. It didn't seem right, and I, I worried about it a lot. Because I like Viv. You mean it seemed funny that she'd do this without telling you, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So I finally just went out to the apartment and camped on the doorstep until the old woman showed up. She told me that Vivian was out of town on a vacation. And she didn't know where, and she didn't know when she'd be back. She said there was no place I could write her either. Mm-hmm. And that's all the explanation you got? Yeah. And I thought about it a lot before I came down here. Well, what do you mean, Mr. McCann? Well, Viv told me that her mother had been beating her up all her life since she was 13 or 14, and always accusing her of things. She said she married this Harmon guy just to get away from home. Well, I tried to get Viv to kick the old lady out or move away herself. I even offered to help her out financially, but she wouldn't listen to that. It was a lousy situation for a nice kid like that to be in. The old lady just couldn't do anything but complain. Well, um, do you think that something violent might have happened between Vivian and her mother, Mr. McCadden? That's exactly it. Now, if Viv was taking any kind of a trip, going anywhere, I'm sure she'd have told me. And I'm sure she'd have taken that little old 47 Ford with her. Now, what makes you say that? Well, she was crazy about that little car. She used to get out every Saturday and polish it up and take care of it and look after it. She didn't have any money for a train ticket or a plane ticket. Viv lived it pretty close to the bone. Mm -hmm. And the car's still there, huh? Still there in the garage. You say you saw her last two weeks ago, huh? Two weeks ago, Tuesday. The night the old lady called me up and told me I'd never see her again. Now, this may be nothing. I, I might be yakking for no reason at all. But I'm worried sick. I think that old lady killed Vivian. 
if she had half a chance. Yeah, it's 72. Seems like spring instead of winter. Mm-hmm. Cold last night, though. Matt coming in? Yes, yeah, in your office. Okay. Anything from Murph or Crockett yet? Yeah, I'm still out at the defense plant. I'll let you know. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hey, we're going to have to get a new hot plate, Ben. It took me an hour to make up a pot. Mm-hmm. Any uh, sugar left? Yeah. Here you go. Oh, hey. Do you look over that McCadden complaint? Yep. Asher's out with Shelley checking on the cabin. Seems okay so far. Good family, good business, no trouble. Uh, how about the girl? Nothing down here on her. Klein said he'd stop by the restaurant and ask around. But they don't open till noon. I see. Uh, boy, I could stand a lot of this weather. Yeah, me too. Hey, you got a match? Yeah, here, catch. Right. How about Mrs. Kenowak? Nothing on her either. Well... I have to wait and... Uh, Murph just phoned in from the defense plant. Or anything? Yeah, personnel told them Vivian Harmon's on an extended leave of absence. Did she give any reason? She didn't give anything. Her mother called and told them Vivian had to leave town unexpectedly two weeks ago. Lieutenant Guthrie? That's right, Mrs. Knovak. And this is Sergeant Graham. How do? What is, please? Well, we'd like to talk to you a few minutes if you can spare the time, Mrs. Knovak. I'm cleaning house. Is it important? Well, we won't take too long. Come. I hate small apartments. Always so dirty is. Small places get this way. In Europa, I live in big house. Clean. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Vivian around today? Vivian? My daughter? Yes. Why you are here? Oh, well, just a routine check, Miss Kennebec. Friend of Vivian's complained that he tried to see her a couple of times, and when he talked to you, you told him Vivian had left town. He didn't think your information about it was very satisfactory. That McCabin man, George, he went to you. That's right. The people at the defense plant tell us you phoned them and said Vivian had left town rather suddenly. It's true. We'd like to know where she went, Mrs. Kennebec. Do not know that. Well, that seems rather strange. She's your daughter. You live with her. Didn't she tell you where she was going? No. Well, did she tell you why she was leaving town? She talks to me little, Vivian does. She said it was job singing with band. Vivian always wants to sing with band all her life. What band? What's the name of it? I do not know. Did she ever do that kind of work before? Once, when she was 19, she met her husband in band. Mr. Harmon, her ex-husband? Her husband. Well, they were divorced over a year ago, weren't they? Still her husband. She cannot change it. I see. Well, uh, when exactly did uh, Vivian leave town? It's two weeks now. Did she take a plane or a train? I do not know. A taxi picked her up early in the morning. She left in pretty much of a hurry, didn't she? Yes. Has she written you? Yes, twice she has written. Uh, Do you have the letters here? No, I burned them. Never keep letters. Well, what did she say in the letters, Mrs. Kennebec? That she was well and happy and getting her own good. Do you happen to remember where they were written from? Uh, oh, Phoenix and a New Mexico place. You say she's traveling with a band? Yes. But when did these letters come? It was Saturday. Last Saturday. Both of them on the same day? Yes. Did she give you an address you could write back to? No. I tell you once before. Uh, yes, sir. Did you happen to notice if the letters were written on hotel stationery? No. I did not notice this. That George should not have come to you. Well, he was worried about Vivian, Mrs. Kennebec. She's all right. No need to worry about Vivian. She is not his to worry about. She belongs to another man. You mean Robert Harmon? He's her husband. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you don't like Mr. McCadden much, do you? I'm not like. 
You no worry. She fine. I do not worry. Now you go. I finish my housework. Could we look at her room first? This is her room. Bed comes down out of the wall. Bathroom there. What about the closet where she kept her clothes? Same place where bed comes from. Well, do you mind if we look at that for a second? Well? I am citizen of this country. Is there law? Well, we'd just like to look at it, Mrs. Kennaway. See what clothes she took with her. We can get a search warrant. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Mr. Look. I show you. His closet. See? Uh, yeah. These all her clothes? All mine. Look a little small for you, Mrs. Kennevac. Some are Vivian's. Now you go. Does she take many clothes with her, Mrs. Kennevac? Yes, she leaves some here. Well, all right, Mrs. Kennevac. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Goodbye. Oh, uh, if Vivian writes to you again, would you mind letting us know, please? Why? I'd just like to know where she is, what town. All right. You go now. Here. Here's my card. Just call me there. All right. Goodbye. Bye. She's lovely. Truly lovely. Yeah. Shovel in the back. Stick around it from a hardware store downtown. Some mud on the end. We took samples for the crime lab. Oh? Yeah, there was dried blood on the floor mat. The time, February 1st, 1945. The place a battlefield in Western Europe. An American infantry company was crossing a stretch of open ground in a night nice attack on Heckertite. Suddenly, the group was pinned down by a vicious burst of machine gun fire from a house on the outskirts of town. Private Edward A. Bennett started to crawl toward the edge of the field in order to flank the house. Even though a machine gunner spotted him and tried to cut him down, Bennett managed to reach the protection of a few trees. Under the cover of the trees, he worked his way to the rear of the building which harbored the gunners. Disposing of the sentry with his trench knife, the young infantryman charged into the darkened house. There he was set upon by seven men. In a furious hand-to-hand battle, he silenced all of them. Now his company could move on and sweep all resistance from the town. The fearless initiative and stalwart combat ability of Edward A. Bennett brought him the Medal of Honor. Edward Bennett, who asked not what his country could do for him, but what he could do for his country. Gonzalez is staying there to keep an eye on her today, and Murph and Crockett will take over at four. Now, look, uh, I'll need four more men. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, we're at the post office substation now. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay? Yeah. Waldo's sending some men out to question Harmon. Rock and Abbott are checking into the musicians' union and booking agencies around town to see about the band. Well, look, it's almost two bends. That mail carrier should be in by now. Yeah. He said he'd have him wait for us. Good. How long are they going to take at the crime lab? Well, they should have something in an hour. Oh, uh, this is it here. Okay, get my back right. Hey, did you see that call? Oh, are you the two policemen looking for me? Uh, and James Henry. That's right. My name's Guthrie. This is Sergeant Graham. Oh, I'm pleased to know you. Well, I hope you can help us on this. The postmaster tells us that you handled the route on the 900 block on Maragani Street. Oh, yes. I've been carrying there for about 18 years. What's that? I'm just checking. You know an apartment building at 910? Oh. Oh, the Sherwood. Yes. Well, what about that? Well, a woman by the name of Kennevac lives there. Has a daughter named Vivian Harmon. Uh Uh-huh. Mrs. Kennevac tells us that she had a couple of letters last Saturday. One from Phoenix, another from New Mexico. 
Do you happen to remember delivering them? Well, offhand, no. Are you sure you know the place? Oh, yes, yes. It's a big two-story job. It's kind of a court affair. All the boxes are set in front in a little sort of a uh, ante room there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't even recognize those names you gave me. I, and I remember names of the people on my route, too. Oh, haven't you ever delivered mail to Mrs. Kennebec before? Well, not that I know of. How about uh, Vivian Harmon? No, no, hurry. Let's see, there's 16 units in that building. Now, offhand, I could name 14 families there that I deliver mail to. <laughs> you see, I got a pretty good memory. Well, then you're sure you didn't deliver two letters there last Saturday? Oh, I'm positive. Hmm. Well, maybe Friday or Thursday, something like that. Now, Lieutenant, I've never delivered mail to either one of those names. I just, I'm sure. Uh, how long they lived there? Mm, over a year, I guess. No, no, I never delivered it. Well, what's up? Is there anything wrong? Uh, just check it. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, sure. I'm glad to help you. Uh, hey. Yeah? Uh, special delivery might be able to help you. They might have taken something out there. Of course, I wouldn't be able to tell you about that. We already checked them. They haven't made a delivery to that apartment house in four weeks. Hi, Ben. Hi. Hey, if anybody picked up a band here in town, I went on the road with him the last month. He did his own booking. He didn't tell the union about it. Oh, anything else? Well, it'll take a while on the trains, the planes, and the buses. Cab company's being checked, too. Mm -hmm. Asher and I worked a building all day long. Only three people in the place who know Vivian and her mother. The Mrs. Desmond lives right below them. Didn't have much to say. Didn't even notice Vivian hadn't been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Man who lives across the hall is hard of hearing, so he wasn't much help either. Manager Merton Blackler is waiting in your office. Oh? Yeah, he had quite a bit to say when we talked to him. I thought you'd want to see him. Sure. Did Matt knock off? Hey, he's in the crime lab working with Sam. Oh. Uh, Mr. Blackler, this is Lieutenant Guthrie. I do. Uh, hello, Mr. Blackler. Sergeant Quine tells me you might be able to help us. Well, I don't know about that. I hope so. Uh, Mr. Blackler's around the apartment house all the time, Lieutenant. He thinks he saw Mrs. Kenovac put something in the backseat of the Ford one night. Oh? Uh -huh. Yeah, last Wednesday night. It was very late, and I was just about to go to bed when I saw her outside my window. Uh, Mr. Blackler says it looked like a rug or something. Isn't that right? Yeah, uh... As a matter of fact, I got thinking about it the next day, and I went up to the apartment, and sure enough, the living rub rug was gone. I asked Mrs. Kennebec about it when I saw her again, and she said she'd just taken it out to be clean. Well, the rug was there when I saw the place this morning. It was funny she'd take it herself, huh? That time of night, too. Yeah. Mr. Blackler, do you happen to know what time Mrs. Kennebec came back that night? Oh, gosh, I, I went right to sleep. But I know she was back bright and early the next morning. Now, how do you know that? Well... I get up early to empty the garbage cans and sweep the halls. And she was in front of her place with a mop. I guess she spilled something and was cleaning it up. Did you see what it was? No. Funny thing her doing that. Why? Why, that's my job, Lieutenant. Yes. It came in 10 minutes ago. Good. Hardware store man remembers selling the shovel. His description fits Mrs. Kennevac. Car still there? On his way in. Well, Matt's going from the lab. He's waiting for you in the garage. Blood stains on the floor mat checked out. About two to three weeks old, according to the doc. Uh -huh. Says the dirt on the shovel could have come from anywhere around. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Guthrie's off. Well, yeah. yeah just a minute. Mrs. Kennevac on the phone, then. Oh. Hello? Yes, this is Lieutenant Guthrie. Yeah, yes. Yes, Miss Kennebec. When? I see. Well, I, I'd like to see them if I may. Well, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hmm. What now? She says she got another letter from Vivian in this afternoon's mail. See the letter, please. Read if you want. No. She's in Tucson, huh? In Arizona, yes. 
Uh, do you have the envelope that came in, Mrs. Canavac? Throw it away. Just the letter. Go ahead, read. I do not mind. All right. Uh-huh. Here, Matt. Thanks. You see? The sister's all right. Everything fine. Yeah. But she doesn't give an address, Mrs. Canavac. Just Tucson is enough, huh? She's fine. Did you write this letter, Mrs. Canavac? Huh? No. Vivian, she writes it. We talked with your postman after he finished today's deliveries. This letter couldn't have come today. He did? It came in this afternoon mail. There is no afternoon mail. I tell you, it came in this mail. The postman told us he's never delivered any mail to you at this address. I get letters from Vivian, like I tell you. Would you mind writing your name for us? Why? Just to compare your handwriting with the handwriting in this letter. I not write for you. I show you a letter. Now you go. We'd like to ask you about the shovel in the car. In Vivian's car? Mm-hmm. I understand you bought the shovel last Wednesday afternoon at the Central Hardware Store. I did not tell you that. Well, we looked into it. That was the day Vivian left town with the band, wasn't it? Yes. What did you use the shovel for, Mrs. Canavan? Where were you digging? There were bloodstains in the car. Were they Vivian's? This is a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? On suspicion of murder. She was not a good girl. All my life I tell her to stay away from men who will harm her. But she not believe me. She not respect her mother. When she marries, she marry a man who love her. But she not love him. It's not right for a girl to marry a man and leave him. He's still married. Has no right to see other men. This all I tell her. Where is she? I take you where I bury her. I take you myself. I bury her deep, very deep so I can forget her. So deep that I can forget her forever. Yeah. Want to get your coat? I have it. All right. I hate small place. Always get so dirty. Before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? Right, thank you, sir. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Uh, thank you. My name is Greb. Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number assigned to the...